Why does today's music lack soul? I don't think it's because today's pop music is made to appeal to the largest audience, so therefore it's really boring and lame and they shave off all the edges. Pop music's always been like that. And I don't think it's because the technology is now allowing a lot of people to make music, so you have this crowded field of really crappy music, which is true. However, sometimes that kind of stuff can actually have a lot of feeling and soul because the people making it are trying so hard. And I also don't think it's just because of technology, like drum machines with their perfect timing, auto-tune with their perfect tuning, the use of samples, and the lack of even needing knowing how to play an instrument, because I've made records where all those things happened and the record still had a lot of feeling and soul. Now, who am I to define soul? Well, let's just say I'm also talking about depth, feeling, vibe, mojo. You know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not saying all of today's music lacks soul. I'm just talking about all the sheep and boring stuff of which there's a lot. I was recently invited to this thing called a plug and play, and that is where somebody will rent some studio space and invite a lot of young producers and artists from around Atlanta to come in and play their music. They get one minute to play one of their songs, and I listened to the stuff. It all technically sounded really good, but it all sounded the same, and it was all kind of boring after a while, and nice people, and I appreciate them trying, but it was like, it was like nothing was really there. There was, I can't remember a single thing that I heard. And I walked out thinking that that was probably the first time these people had actually played their music for other people. And that got me thinking about something. And then I read this. We are beset by and immersed in apps and devices that are quietly reducing the amount of meaningful interaction we have with each other. David Byrne from The Talking Heads. And that got me thinking down this very interesting path. Before recording technology, music was something that had to be experienced in person. You had to go hear somebody play an instrument, and the performer had to perform in front of people is the only way you could hear it. The audience would get something from the music, and they would respond. The performer would be affected by the response of the audience. And let me tell you, there's a huge difference between the way you feel about your music and how you even understand your music when you're playing it in front of people as opposed to just playing it by yourself. You're going to get instant feedback on whether what you're doing is good or bad. And if it's good and you're playing in front of people, it's definitely going to affect the way you're performing at that moment. And also, to even learn how to play an instrument meant you were probably going to take music lessons, which meant there was somebody teaching you, there was this interaction there, and then you'd get in an orchestra or a band, an ensemble, and you had rehearsals where you had to interact with people. People would state their opinions or give advice, and you wouldn't always agree. Sometimes there are arguments, and there would be realizations and knowledge passed along, but there's a lot of human interaction on how we even learned and just even getting to the point where you could play and perform was quite a task, which, you know, depended a lot on being around other people. Now, when recorded music and the ability to play it back through the radio or record players became more available, it definitely eliminated the need to be at a performance to hear the music. But just creating these recordings was quite a task. Back then, typically, everybody had to be in the same room or at least the same studio performing at the same time to even record the music. There were musicians, arrangers, singers, tape ops, conductors, whatever, all these people there together that were all pushing and pulling and... And, and making this music, and it just really required all this human interaction. Now, if anyone would like to see what those kind of sessions were like, you should check out this video here of a Frank Sinatra session, and there's a bunch of these Beach Boys recording sessions that were documented that you should really check out. They're so fascinating. I'll put links in the description, and if anyone out there has another example, please put those in the comments. It's something that I don't really know how to define. It's not just other musicians. It's sometimes just having somebody in the room with you. I often will be working on a song or a mix, and I'll have somebody come listen to it, even if I don't see them. Just having somebody in the room with me will affect how I hear what I've been working on. There was this band I produced and recorded years ago called Heavy Mojo. At the time, they were signed to Universal Records, and Universal hired me to produce the band. On their previous records, they had mostly used program drums from a drum machine, and there was one guy in particular that had done a lot of that work. On stage, he was mostly a hype guy, but in the studio, I wanted to use their live band because they had great musicians that 
performed to them live. This guy, the guy who had made the beats, he and I had a couple of disagreements, and there was one day we had an argument, which is not uncommon in the studio. Problem was, he didn't show up to the session the next day. And instantly, I was like, man, the vibe is not the same. I knew that even though he was just mostly sitting in the studio and not talking much because he didn't really have much to do at that point in time, he was affecting the band. If he was sitting there listening to a playback and nodding his head, the band knew they were on the right track and the vibe was good. If he was sitting there just staring at the floor, they knew something was wrong. There was a lot going on, this unspoken communication, because he, I felt like, was the musical soul of that band in many ways. So a lot of people were relying on cues for him and his vibe, whether they realized it or not. So I called him up and said, man, get back in here. Producing isn't just about making the beat. It's about your vibe. And we all need you here. Come on back, man. We need your vibe. Another cool thing that happens when you're working with other people in the studio is having them urge you on when maybe you would stop or maybe having them to tell you to stop or take a break or try something different. Or one of my favorite things is I might be playing the guitar or playing something and somebody go, what was that? What'd you just do? And I'm like, I, I don't know. And they're like, yeah, the thing we went. I'm like, uh, that? I was just like, no, no, that was cool. And I'm like, really? And then I play, I'm like, oh yeah. It's amazing how you can do something and not even know it's like a really cool thing. So there's so much magic that could happen that gets missed because you're alone and nobody's there to hear it. But today, I mean, you can make music completely by yourself without anybody's help. In fact, you can start making music not knowing how to play anything and no nothing, not no, no lessons or anything. Just get the computer and you can piece all this stuff together and make a pretty complete sounding production without ever talking to anybody or working with anybody. In fact, you can go through a lot of your life without really having to be in the room with somebody. We text more, we email, we're doing even our phone calls. We don't actually spend as much time right in front of somebody doing real human interaction in so many aspects of our life. And that's a fairly recent thing in human evolution. Now, does that mean good and soulful records have not been made by one person alone? Of course not. My hero, Todd Rundgren, did that plenty of times where he played all the instruments and most of the vocals on some of his records. And of course, Prince, he did all the instruments and vocals pretty much on everything. But come on, man. Those guys are the exception. I feel like maybe they had multiple personalities and identities shoved into their single bodies. That's a little unusual, of course. But remember, both those guys also played in plenty of bands with other people. Much of their coming up as an artist was formed through their human interactions. So why does today's music lack soul? Well, I think it's because today's technology has made it easier to work alone. So we default to what is easiest, and God knows... Working with other people is usually inconvenient and sometimes very, very difficult. But those human interactions, whether they're good or bad or whatever, they they move us, they spark us, they they make us do things that we would never do if we were just alone. What do you think? <laughs>